we were looking at this uh, model reactions this is basically three reactions A plus A the forward reaction having a rate constant KF giving A star plus A and the third reaction is uh, A star which is uh, of course it has a backward reaction that is the second reaction which is a reverse of the first one the third reaction is A star giving products with a rate constant of KF prime the second one having a rate constant KB so we could write these rate equations for um, the production rates of net production rates of um, species A and A star like, like this and of course what you can do now is okay we have um, uh, two equations in uh, C A and C A star uh, D C A over D T and D C A star over D T so let us try to see if we can try to eliminate uh, anything to do with A star. Uh, therefore we now write from the first equation C A star in terms of C A and D C A over D T and um, then you plug that back in uh, the equation for D C A star over D T wherever C A star appears and then you get a complicated looking expression that involves again only D C A over D T and uh, C A wherever it shows up. So one possibility for us is to now plug back 3 and 4 into uh, 1 okay and uh, so wherever you have a C A star you can now plug this over here and uh, then what happens is you can get a very ugly looking equation in uh, D C A over D T in terms of C A right. So plug one and two to get a an equation relating D C A over D T to C A this is going to be a nonlinear second order O D E right it's a very highly nonlinear second order O D E so you are going to have trouble solving that okay so not easy to solve so uh, the the alternate approach the alternate approach is the steady state approximation this is a simplifying approach so this is a simplifying approach there that is we now say D C A star over D D T is approximately equal to 0. The moment you say that um, so we are now essentially trying to adopt the steady state approximation and say D C A star uh, over D T you, you should you should probably say this is quasi steady state this is quasi steady it is not really steady but it is kind of like freeze frame a particular situation that is intermediate where the uh, concentration of the uh, intermediate is apparently not changing. Okay, it changes sort of slowly there in this intermediate region so it is it's sort of like a quasi steady state approximation rather than just steady state alone. So if you now try to uh, uh, say that this is what we want to apply call this equation 5 and uh, so, so what this means is uh, A star is, uh, is uh, produced. quickly quickly uh, in the first reversible reaction and uh, consumed uh, slowly right. So the, the moment you have A hitting each 
hey, A molecules hitting each other you produce A star all right but its consumption with A in the backward reaction as well as its decomposition to form the products is relatively slow in that case then you, you now are producing a lot of A star but for a while it is uh, there with, with, a, with a certain concentration that does not change a lot therefore we can now say on a quasi steady basis this is approximately 0. Then um, so, so using, uh, using 5 and 2 if you now apply 5 to uh, 2 go back here right and say dc a star uh, over dt is approximately equal to 0 uh, we get c a star equal to k f c a square divided by k b c a plus k f prime not very difficult to figure that just to pull out c a star uh, wherever, wherever it appears set this equal to 0 on the left hand side so you can collect terms together and uh, do this. Now let us call this 6 and uh, substitute 6 and 1 the first equation to get to get um, let us say minus dCA over dt equal to omega A the reaction rate based on um, A that is uh, equal to Kf C A squared divided by Kb divided by Kf prime C A plus 1 okay. So we got something we got we got an answer there for dC A over dt. So what we have done basically is we now have an expression for C A star from 6 which we plug in here uh, and then you can rearrange because you now have a C A squared there and then you have a um, uh, um, you can plug in over here and then you should be able to get your D C A over D T right. So what you are getting basically is K F C A, C A squared divided by K B uh, divided by K F prime C A plus 1. Okay, so what is this? What is this? Uh, where does this take us? Okay, what is our original aim? We wanted to find out if this reaction set of three reactions will it behave like a first-order reaction or a second-order reaction or whatever, whatever. whatever. Okay, uh, as far as like a global reaction is concerned. So the global reaction is A giving products, but A star is like an intermediate right that is showing up in a three step reaction scheme and uh, how do you now look at how the global behavior of the rate of depletion of A is going to depend on the concentration of A that is essentially the global question and the global question is is it going to be a first order uh, or a second order and now you have an expression you see it is not so obvious we are not we are now having some 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 soup of an expression there with C A squared showing up in the numerator and C A showing up in the denominator okay. If you did not have the plus 1 right you could have cancelled C A top and bottom and you will have the rate depend only on C A alone not C A squared right. But if you did not have this term and you had only 1 in the denominator then you can say that dCA over dt is going to depend on CA squared. So in the first case you would have deduced that it is going to be a first order reaction in the second case you would have deduced that it is going to be a second order reaction. So the depending upon whether it is going to be first order or second order what you will have to look for is how does this compare with unity that is the reason why we have rearranged things like that it is always good to compare things with 1 okay to say whether it is going to be much larger than 1 or much smaller than 1 yeah. So if it is going to be much larger than 1 we ignore 1 
if it is going to be much um, larger than 1 then we I am sorry I said the same thing uh, if it is going to be much larger than 1 we ignore 1 if it is going to be much smaller than 1 you ignore it right. So that is exactly what we are going to do so at uh, originally we said that this is this is going to be the fast and this is going to be slow um, so with this in, in mind we can now uh, look at when would you when would you have which condition as far as uh, this term comparison in comparison with unity so at high pressure at high pressure um, KB CA over KF prime KF prime is much greater than 1 okay. So what you are saying is KF prime is a unimolecular reaction okay so it is going to go more as P whereas this is the, the reverse reaction we have, the competition is now between look at look at basically what is going on um, the KF CA squared is coming from producing a star with this forward reaction the first forward reaction the KB um, CA is coming from the reverse reaction okay where the A star is getting consumed and the KF prime is actually coming from this one the, the third reaction that is also consuming. So essentially in order for us to understand whether this is going to be larger than 1 or smaller than 1 much larger than 1 or much smaller than 1 we are essentially looking at how the competition between the two reactions that are consuming A star okay fare in relation to the one that is producing A star. So there, are, there, are, there is one reaction that is producing A star there are two reactions that are consuming A star. So between the two reactions that are consuming A star there is a competition on which one is doing a better job of consuming than the other okay. How is that competition faring when compared to the production rate that is what this, this entire expression is all about. So if you want to now look at how this competition in the consumption is happening you have to understand that this reaction the backward reaction that is consuming A star is a second is a, is a bimolecular reaction which is going to go as P squared yeah whereas the, this third reaction that is consuming A star is a unimolecular reaction which is going to go as P as for its reaction rate therefore at high pressure you would expect that the backward reaction which is the second reaction is going to predominate over the, the, the third reaction that is unimolecular and therefore we now expect that the top the numerator in this case is going to be larger than the denominator okay therefore we expect that this should be much larger than 1 and uh, therefore if you now plug that there then omega a then approximately becomes we just go back and uh, get rid of the 1 okay in favor of uh, this, this expression and so you now have a uh, K, KF um, KF prime divided by KB all right and then the CA gets cancelled with uh, one of the one of the two CAs in the, in the numerator to get only one CA this will behave like a first order all right at low pressure right when the pressure is low then the square of the pressure will be lower than the uh, pressure raised to 1 okay that is what low that is what mean that is what is meant by low right. So when you now say at low pressure you, you have the other situation which is KB CA over KF prime is much less than 1 then <coughs> therefore uh, omega a so what you do is you drop the complete uh, expression there in comparison with 1 and uh, therefore you now simply get this is this is equal to uh, kfc squared right 
so this is this is first this is second order so with, with just applying the steady state approximation we should now be able to understand how the pressure behavior is going to happen when you are looking at two competing consumption reactions of the intermediates of different molecularities which will behave differently at different pressures this is essentially what you are trying to do that is that's like a summary of what is going on good then let us now try to see how this works in the case of uh, the HBR example. the HBR example now let us look at the uh, global reaction the global reaction H2 plus BR2 gives K twice HBR right if this were a molecular level reaction if this were a molecular level reaction then what would you say for the rate the, the, the reaction rate you would say the, the, the reaction rate would be um, dCHBr divided by dt is equal to we still have to have the new double prime minus new single prime for HBr new double prime is 2 new single prime is 0 for HBr so you will have twice yeah, uh, K C H 2 times C B R 2 that means they will be the, the, the concentrations will be raised to uh, powers 1 each right if this were a molecular level reaction. So if this were a we would write we would write dchbr divided by dt equal to twice k ch2 cbr2 but this is wrong another why is it wrong it's because it doesn't happen at the molecular level not because of what we wrote right this does not happen this is not what is observed this is not what is observed that means if you were to do an experiment where you had hydrogen and bromine and you now allowed the reaction to happen you now started sampling a hydrogen bromide okay at different times you do not find that the rate of change of hydrogen bromide concentration to go linearly as concentration of hydrogen or concentration of bromine as you now do this experiment with varying concentrations of hydrogen or bromine this is how you would deduce this you actually find that the rate of rate of production of rate of change of concentration of bromine is not going linearly as concentrations of hydrogen and bromine so in reality yeah. So experiments indicate the following result DC HPR divided by DT is some constant C1 CH2 CBR2 to the half right well you know now that that is not the whole story because we now have this bar but as it is we are now finding that the, the rate of the rate of production of hydrogen bromide is dependent on the concentration of bromine to the half rather than linearly right but that is not the whole story hold your breath this is getting a lot more interesting so we now have C H B R divided by another constant C2 well um, let us use capital C's here for these constants because we are using 
uh, small c's for the concentration so this is um, so just in case you are getting confused we will now have this little um, serif font so this is c1 and uh, this is c2 cbr2 Oof, what does that mean this is a pretty wacky expression there okay now if you were to be so intelligent has to immediately start thinking about what we did here right the moment you see a 1 plus something you are like going to say ah I know what to do okay I am going to look at when will this be actually much larger than 1 okay and then throw away the 1 and then I am going to uh, you know rearrange things and what is going to happen so you are not going to say well this you know this, this constant times BCBR2 is going to go up there and then it is going to become 1 and a half it is not going to become like 1 that was bad so the original prediction was bad to bad, bad still okay but that is not the more inter most interesting thing the most interesting thing here is you now have a CHBR in the denominator is that okay what would you allow what, what, what would you what, what would you want to keep in your final expressions for the production of the, the production rate of the product the answer is like what an, what an experimentalist would do which is you have to allow for the concentrations of stable species that are participating in the reaction and the stable species would be either reactants or products as well and here we now find that the concentration of the product is showing up as influencing the rate of production of the product itself and how it is showing up in the denominator right what does that mean it means that if you now have a increase in the concentration of HBr the rate of production of HBr is going to decrease you started out with no HBr you started out, started out with only hydrogen and bromine and you started producing HBr so the moment you start producing HBr you are now going to actually impede the reaction because the rate of production of HBr is going to come down because the concentration of HBr is increasing that is what is called a self inhibiting reaction okay so this is an example of what is called as a self inhibiting right that is the more the product is produced well if you are if you not scientists we were like uh, advertising managers or something we would probably say the more the product is produced the less the product is produced okay, that is not what <laughs> that is not what we should say the, the more the product is produced the less the rate at which it is produced okay so we are we are now looking at how the rate of its production is affected by how much of it is produced so the, the more the product is produced the the less its rate of production becomes right now our problem is not just trying to reconcile a self inhibiting reaction our problem is more basic if I were to say that the actual experimental data were to dip, show that the rate of production of HPR dependent on the concentration of bromine power half instead of one or one and a half so the other possibility that I did not talk about is what if this entire thing were actually much less than one then you still have the concentration of uh, the rate of production of bromine to be uh, to be depending upon the concentration of bromine to the half which is not the case is what, what the global reaction says right so you have a half or three halves depending upon this is great, much greater than one or much less than one that is like the overall dependence 
if it is comparable to 1 you have to keep this as it is and we cannot resolve exactly between half and 3 halves it is somewhere in between right for the concentra concentration of bromine depending uh, in influencing the rate and on top of it we have to explain the presence of CHBR so how would you do this right so this is possible the, the, the above result the above result the above resu result can be explained can be explained by the following five step mechanism right and we say five step mechanism we are now talking about things are happening at the molecular level so far if this was a global reaction that was not happening at the molecular level clearly because if you if it were this would be the rate react rate, rate equation but that is not what it, what is found in the experiments so something else is happening at the molecular level let us look at the five step mechanism so if you now say there was some um, compound a, a x prime some species x prime that bromine collided with to form uh, 2 br that is an intermediate right um, with a rate constant k1 and let us call this reaction 1 um, this is a chain initiation step and uh, the intermediate br now attacks this table reactant h2 to produce hbr plus another intermediate h which is a which has a rate constant k2 and let us call this reaction 2 this is a chain um, chain propagating propagation step because we start started with a intermediate reacted with a stable reactant produced a stable product but produced another intermediate so like the net um, gain and loss of intermediates is the same okay so it is just propagating the chain and uh, let us say we have a third reaction where H is reacting with Br2 to give you uh, HBr plus Br this is this is the Br counterpart of H the, in the previous reaction so this is let us say reaction number 3 this is also a chain propagation step and uh, then we have H plus HBr that gives you H2 plus Br right look at what is going on right this is starting with a intermediate it is reacting with a stable product and producing a stable reactant and producing another intermediate so it is intermediate neutral if you just count intermediates blindly this is still like a chain propagation step all right but what is but, but, but it is actually consuming a stable product and producing a stable reactant that is simply, that's simply because this is actually the reverse of reaction 2 so you have reversible reactions that are happening okay in trying to get into equilibrium under the given conditions right and what, what is the um, what, what, what is the uh, uh, flip side of that some of the stable products that you produce might actually get consumed right so in this case we found that A plus A those are the stable reactants produces a star plus a right we are actually not producing any more reactants than we consumed stable reactants we have instead produced uh, intermediates that is all right okay that is like a chain initiation step and the reverse reaction a plus a star 
gives 2A that is again producing stable reactants. It is kind of like saying yeah I started with reactants and then did a lot of things and then got the reactants back. <laughs> okay. So the story obviously is not over there you now have A star giving products. Now let us suppose that this was actually a re reverse reaction then you would be consuming products to give you intermediates and that is when you will start looking at self inhibiting reactions. So when you are having the stable products being involved in re, um, reverse reactions right then they get consumed and their concentrations affect your global reaction rate right. So this is a 4 all right but this is a uh, this is a chain propagating step all right but this is this is the one that is reverse of uh, this is an inhibition reaction um, reverse of reverse of 2 okay and uh, finally we now have x prime plus br plus br gives of course the previous reaction had a rate constant k4 and this is a reaction rate constant k5 br2 plus x prime okay. Now what is going on here we are um, we are talking we are starting with an intermediate two intermediates as a matter of fact and then producing a stable species the stable species so we are actually killing the intermediates but this way of killing intermediates is to actually produce back the stable reactant yeah. So this is a chain terminating step and it is a reverse of uh, reverse of 1. So you are having 2 reverse reactions in this out of out of 5. So effectively this is having a reverse here, this is having a reverse here, this is the one that is not having a reverse reaction yeah and there are two, 2 reactions that are producing HBr, there is one that is consuming HBr all right and finally something that you have to keenly note you now have a termolecular reaction here. So the moment you have a termolecular reaction as opposed to anything else that is bimolecular okay the first thing that you have to think about immediately is effective pressure. So anytime you see a unimolecular reaction versus a bimolecular reaction or a bimolecular reaction versus a termolecular reaction whenever you are making these kinds of comparisons the first thing that hits, hits your head is pressure what is the effect of pressure okay. So that is one of the things that we will have to be looking at just like how we did uh, previously for this example. So the, the, the answer the answer is I am not going to work out the details that is going to be a homework for you. So here is the answer on how so what you do you, you now take each of those reactions write the rate, equa rate equation for whatever is its chief products okay in terms of it is reactants concentration this is a molecular level thing so law of Mohs action directly applies right and we can show we can show using steady state approximation that capital C1 that we had before right in the um, in the uh, global reaction rate expression is twice K2 times K1 divided by K5 to the half and uh, C 
two equal to k three divided by k four. So this is a homework for you. So whenever I say we can show, I basically mean you can show. Okay, so just go ahead and show yourself. Don't don't don't. Uh, well, let's not worry about this. So, so you understand, right? That means if you now write out the rate equations for each of these, and then pick out those rates that are based on intermediates, that is, DCBR over DT or DCH over DT. Typically, these are the two intermediates that are happening here. Okay, and then set them approximately equal, uh, equal to zero. You now get two equations, and you have to try to eliminate CH and CBR. In this, in this expression, and you have to pray to all the gods that C x prime would vanish as well. <laughs> all right, and then you will get something that looks like this. After massaging all the remaining equations and so on, okay, don't 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 over massage your because whenever you know the answer, you try to actually try to fit it in. Uh, but I, but I, I have done this when I was a student. Okay, so it's it's not, it's not terribly bad. Uh, you can you can show this, yeah. So, what else can we do? So this is this is an example of how the steady state approximation uh, looks like. So now let's look at another approach where we try to simplify, which is called the um, partial equilibrium. Partial equilibrium approximation. Partial equilibrium approximation. Now, this is a bit different from what we have done for the steady state approximation, but effectively leads to the same, same idea. The idea here is we want to try to get algebraic expressions for concentrations of intermediates as a function of concentrations of stable species does not have to be reactants okay. So this is our goal we do not want to deal with a, 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 a ODE for the concentration of intermediates we do not want to deal with a expression there for DC A star over DT and then do a time integration of that and try to find out how the A star changes in time and so on okay. The so previously we said no change in time okay approximately 0 for the rate and we just go, go with a algebraic expression. Is there another way by which we can obtain algebraic expressions for the concentrations of intermediates as a function of concentrations of the stable species reactants or products right. The answer is we will now try another approach the remember these are based on some physics it is not like we are trying to do this just for the sake of getting these algebraic expressions okay the previous case we said the intermediates are quickly produced and then they are there as a pool for some time when they are getting interchanged through the chain propagation steps right and takes a while for them to happen and during this time they, 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 their concentrations are approximately constant okay so that was the physics there. There is another thing that we can try to exploit which is the occurrence of these reverse reactions to forward reactions right. So typically when you now have two reactions that are forward and reverse pair and let us suppose that they are fast okay like the first, ex first example that we had no A plus A gives A star plus A forward and backwards and that is fast and the second reaction A star giving products was the one that was slow. So what happens there you now start with A, A bombards with itself like one molecule of A bombards with another molecule of A and quickly produces A star you now have an equilibrium that is established with A star and A like a soup and now A star is around and it is it's, it's an equilibrium with A right and it just slowly gets consumed during uh, the third reaction for, for, it to, to, for, for it to produce the final stable products. 
right. So during this time is it possible for us to exploit the equilibrium between A star and A between the forward and the backward reactions. So is it, if it is now so if effectively what we are looking for is if you now have fast reactions that are forward and reverse is it possible to actually apply equilibrium equation rather than rate equation. The rate equation is the one which has a dc a star over dt equals a function of ca and ca star okay that is an ODE and we do not like the ODE we want an algebraic expression. But the equilibrium equation for that assuming that it is actually in equilibrium right would be you now have a kp or a kc that is equal to concentrations of reactants of uh, the uh, forward reaction divided by concentrations of the, co the reactants of the reverse reaction raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficients right that is an algebraic relationship. We do not have a we do not have a differential equation there right. So this is essentially what you are trying to do. So here where forward and oh, it is a fast forward and reverse This is not fast forward this is fast forward and reverse okay uh, reactions um, occur so that they could be considered as in equilibrium. Actually we are saying something about their rates. It is not just that they are fast and therefore uh, those, those reactions are in equilibrium they essentially when you say something is in equilibrium we are saying that the forward reaction rate is equal to the backward reaction rate the reverse reaction rate okay. So we, we are basically saying let us not worry about how fast it is it is all fast okay so they are all equal right that is exactly what you are what you are saying here. So and uh, this leads to leads to algebraic. relations relations for intermediate concentration in terms of stable species okay using the equilibrium constant So now you have the equilibrium constant we know is a ratio of the forward to the backward reaction rates rate, rate constants okay. So many times we find these kinds of ratios showing up you see. So here as well uh, we find these kinds of ratios that are showing up k1 over k5 for example is actually ratio of forward to backward right. So that that is exactly the, 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 the equilibrium constant. So we, we will simply be dealing with equilibrium constant instead of the ratio of the forward and backward reactions as if the two were in equilibrium. So let us now look at an example. So example or should not say example uh, let us say let us look at consider temp template reactions template reactions let us say A plus B2 gives um, let us say this is forward and backward so we call this A, A B plus B uh, this is uh, K F1 this is K B1 all right and let us call this uh, 1 and uh, B plus A2 gives and takes gives and takes AB plus A and we call this KF2 
KB2, let's call this reaction 2 and uh, AB plus A2 gives and takes A2B plus A right and let us have rate constants KF3 and KB3 we will call this reaction 3 and finally let us have A plus AB plus M gives A2B plus M that is reaction 4. That means the last reaction is not a um, a uh, reverse reaction so it, it, it uh, or forward uh, it, it doesn't have a reverse reaction so strictly speaking the way you should look at it this this is actually two reactions two reactions two reactions and one reaction so totally it's actually seven reactions it's sort of like having five reactions but if you were to write it like this it would have been only three reactions this this and this going together is forward and reverse this and this going together is forward and reverse and the last one right so it is just a different way of writing this and uh, so let us call the rate constant for the uh, fourth one is KF4 we do not have a KB4 yeah so all we are interested in now it depends on how you are I mean if you if you are like a chemistry kind of person like I want to see reality what is this A and B okay they are not really uh, happening in reality you might want to throw hydrogen for A and oxygen for B okay and um, finally you might get you might be looking for H2O right and, uh, and then you can say AB is OH and so on. Uh, so essentially what is going on is now you have a atomic species uh, colliding with a molecular species to give rise to two atomic species so this is like a chain uh, branching right and this is again starting with one intermediate and this is the, this is supposed to be a stable species you are now getting two intermediates so chain branching and uh, this is a stable species here this is an intermediate this is the final product and that is an intermediate so that is a chain propagation you start with an intermediate reacting with a stable reactant producing a stable product and leaving another intermediate and M is any third body okay and you are finally getting a stable product so this is like a chain termination step so you can see that sequence of events that happen that starts with the chain initiation branching propagation termination and so on. Now what we are interested in is to find out what is the net rate of production of the final product and how it depends on the concentrations of the stable reactants and the presence of the intermediates is spoiling the show we want to try to get rid of them yeah. So what we want to do then is we say here we say um, K, KF1 CA C uh, C B two equal to K K B one K B one C A B C B right that is for the first reaction okay <coughs> or since you have the same molecularity on either side okay this will go as p squared this will go as p squared so concentrations can be written in terms of mole fractions and mole fractions can have pressures uh, the total pressure so the, the pressure dependence is going to be the same on both sides so it does not matter whether you use a uh, equilibrium constant based on pressure or equilibrium constant based on concentration I am just going to go back and use concentration uh, uh, equilibrium constants based on pressures okay. So, so the, the, this, this simply means that we now have C A B C B divided by C A 
C B two equal to capital P one, right? Capital K sorry capital K subscript P one. Capital K represents equilibrium constant based on pressure, and we have subscript one to denote this is actually the equilibrium for the first reaction. Similarly, we can write we can write for the second and third we can write C A B um, C A divided by C B C A two equal to K P two and the third one C A two B C A equal to sorry divided by um, C A B C A two equal to K P three. Right. So, what was the purpose now? Do we still understand? We want to try to get rid of CB and CA in favor of uh, and CAB as well. We want to get rid of CB, CAB, and CA in favor of CB2, CA2, and CA2B. All right, so this is something that we will do next class. Mm -hmm.